Hello everyone and welcome to our video on the programming language Rust. In this video, I'll be discussing whether or not Rust can be considered a failed programming language. Recently, Google engineers introduced Carbon, an open source programming language created by Google and hailed as a possible successor to C++. This has sparked conversations around why Rust wasn't chosen as the official successor to C++ despite its own growing popularity and community of Rustations. Rust is a statically typed programming language for performance and safety, especially safe concurrency and memory management. Its syntax is similar to that of C++. The open source project was originally developed at Mozilla Research, and in 2021, the Rust Foundation took the torch and drove the development of the language. According to a Stack Overflow survey, Rust is considered to be one of the fastest growing programming languages and has been ranked as the most liked language by its users. But some programmers say otherwise. A good language should be safe, fast, and easy to program. Rust is known to be a difficult language with a steep learning curve. It is designed to uniquely solve some very challenging problems in programming. However, as a beginner, using CUDA or MPI, on Rust is not very simple compared to other options like Swift and Go. Moreover, Rust is slow. Even for small projects, the compile times are painfully long, and runtime measurements show that Rust is less efficient than the C programs. Additionally, Rust's complex syntax can make it challenging to write code without introducing new bugs. While Rust does save developers from some mistakes, it does not stop them from unintentionally writing bugs. Another issue with Rust is the constant warnings appearing over parentheses, especially over if statements and while loops. However, despite these issues, most big techs are already using Rust, while others plan to do so. Dropbox uses Rust for some mission-critical bits of its programming. Other internet companies would probably choose Rust when they need good security, multi-threading, and to reduce the amount of hardware. For example, a highly efficient web service written in Rust can save millions of dollars in hardware for a company running thousands of servers. Google also plans to use Rust in the Linux kernel after bringing support for the system's programming language, Rust to Android. To reiterate, the aim is to reduce security flaws. Meanwhile, Microsoft has turned to Rust to reduce memory-related bugs in Windows components. Currently, there are 25 repositories on GitHub of the public work Microsoft is doing with Rust. Most of them have occasional commits, which is minuscule compared to 317 C++ repositories. Facebook has also joined the Rust Foundation, an organization established in 2021 to make Rust a mainstream language of choice for systems programming and beyond. In 2020, Linux kernel developers proposed rewriting new Linux kernel code in Rust. The idea was to add new code in Rust to the originally written kernel in C. However, this idea is still in the development stage, described as experimental. In the future, Rust could become a top favorite language for the Internet of Things devices with tiny processors and little RAM but need a high level of security. Considering its relationship with big techs, Rust would probably become a favorite language for internet companies that need to offer web services to millions of users. In conclusion, while Rust may have its issues, it is not a failed programming language. Its unique features and ability to provide safety and security to mission-critical programs make it an ideal language for some of the world's biggest tech companies. As the programming world continues to evolve, Rust's role in it is set to continue to grow.